So we've got a DAP LF to have a look at today. Low fuel apparently. So we'll hop in the cab, see what's going on. Right. Ugh. Let's see what's going on on here. So as you can see, we've got fuel level low. We've got our low fuel level light on as well on the left hand side. And it's basically saying it's empty. So I've just plugged JAL test in from Eclipse Diagnostics. We'll jump on the computer now, see what's going on. So we'll do uh, auto VIN identification as always. The simplest way to get into a truck in my eyes is doing this. So where are we going to find our fuel gauge? Well, that'll be in uh, Vehicle Intelligence Center. So we'll just connect to Vic. We'll go to fault code reading. And straight away, we've got a fuel level sensor, open circuit or short circuit to battery positive 48 times. We'll just have a quick look at the uh, fuel level sensor here. We'll see some information about the component. And luckily, JAL test here displays a graph with the resistance that's required for the various percentages of fuel level. We can see here that if we have something around, I don't know, between 229 and 306, we should have just over half a tank. So if we go to measurements, measurement selection, and we put in fuel here, we can check our resistance value and our fuel level, which is 1200 ohms and 0%, confirming what the dash is saying. So what we'll do is we'll grab a resistor. There we go. Now I know the value of this resistor. So here's our uh, fuel level sensor plug should be two wires so all we'll do now is slap our resistor in these two pins and see if the gauge changes on the dash so that's in there let's go check the dash so we've got our resistor in the plug now let's go cycle the ignition check the dash see what that's in there we go our fuel level low is gone and we've actually got half a tank now this is why it's handy to always have resistors kicking about in your toolbox because look at the time I've actually saved. I haven't had to go through wiring diagrams, checking bulkhead plugs or connectors in the chassis for example. We can just slap a resistor in the end of the plug and mimic a fuel level. So now let's have a look at measurements on gel test and see what that's saying. So we'll go back to our measurements now. There you go, 270 ohms because funny that I keep them resistors on the van. And uh, we're at 57% on the fuel gauge. So that was our measurements that are now working. What does it say about the fault code? So there we go, fault code's gone to inactive. Our fuel level gauge has come back up on the dash and in measurements on JAL test, we've also got a half a tank measurement in percentages and we've also got a resistance value equivalent to the resistor I fitted in the wiring harness. So nothing to do with the wiring, custom needs to order a stack pipe or fuel level sensor. And yeah, that's me done, next job. So we've got a MX-11, Model Year 17 DAF CF to have a look at now. It's got every light going up on the dip, so we'll jump in, see what's going on, then we'll get out JAL test and see what's happening with that. Right, let's confirm the customer's concern. Central vehicle controller malfunction. Vehicle controller malfunction. Brake lining wear, not too bothered about that. Engine malfunction. Air supply system malfunction. Cool. What a list. These are all amber faults, so we'll get gel test from Eclipse Diagnostics out now. See what's going on. With gel test plugged in and all our powers and grounds correct, let's go and see what's going on. So we'll do uh, auto VIN identification, model year 17 onwards. I'm going to do a all system scan, seeing as uh, we had a bunch of errors on various systems, and uh, we can build a picture from there. So. Let's do the scan. So our main system scan is now completed. As you can see, we've got errors with VECQ, PCI, Smart Air Controller, and Cabin Switch Module. Not that I think that, that'll have anything to do with this, but that's a topology view done. We'll have a look at our faults. So we'll just expand these and cruise down here and see what we've got. So VECQ's got a couple of active CAN timeouts. Not a lot, but there's a few. Vic hasn't got any faults. BBM. So our smart air controller, which was coming up on the dip, 
has got a CAN communication signal issue with the engine issue. So these are all U codes in PCI that I'm seeing here. These are all communication. U is a communication issue. A communication issue with VECU. A communication issue with the brake system. So if we go back to our topology view, well, we can talk to VECU and we can talk to EBS. So from looking at our fault codes in PCI, I'd say this is a communication issue from the engine ECU to the truck, not an issue between various nodes or ECUs on VCAN2 network. So in order for us to facilitate this uh, repair to VCAN2 that I'm surmising is the issue with the vehicle, we'll jump on to diagrams from Jaltest. We'll use our model-specific wiring diagrams from InfoPlus. These are our dealer diagrams that will give us bulkhead numbers and connector plug connections. And we want PCI. Specifically, we want VCAN2. So we'll just scroll down here for VCAN2. There you are. And then we'll look for our PCI ECU. So this is our engine ECU here, D420. We'll just hop over a couple of ECUs to see if there's any connections in the middle. Well, we haven't got a gearbox ECU because it's a manual. We haven't got a retarded VCU because it's a manual. So we'll be going to 56K. Let's just zoom in. 56K, 35 and 36. This is our can high and can low for VCAN2. And the wire numbers we'll be looking at there will be 3701 and 3700. So 56K, 35 and 36. Let's get over there and have a look. So we want 56K, uh, 56K, 35 and 36. 35 and 36. So we want 35 and 36, 35 and 36. That's these blue and yellow ones here. And there's our wire numbers. 3700 and should be 3701. Well, we'll just take it as these two anyway. So let's slide them back in there. So we'll just check for resistance here. We should see 120 ohms. Nothing. Nothing at all. So I'd say we've got an open circuit going to the engine ECU on VCAN2. Question is, where is the fault? So I'm going to leave this off here. What we'll do now is tip the cab, find VCAN2 on our engine ECU plug with our diagrams from gel test, and then we'll test for continuity between this plug and the engine ECU to work out which wire it is that's actually broken. So we'll go to diagrams now. We'll just go to PCI MX11. We'll scroll down to the bottom because we're looking for VCAN2. This is VCAN2. This CX3 we know is coming from the bulkhead connection on our Info Plus diagrams at 56K, uh, 35 and 36 or whatever it was. But uh, VCAN2 then comes into our engine ECU plug B. That's got an end resistor. That's what we didn't have any resistance on it was in mega ohms rather than some sort of resistance which i'd expect to see a 120 ohms resistor here we had nothing so we've got a open between can high or can low so we're going to test for resistance now or continuity i should say between 56k at the bulkhead and plug b plug b is the middle one there plug b so let's go and have a look what's going on and get the cab over So our cab's over now. We want plug B, which is the middle one. So what we'll do now is go from this plug here to the bulkhead where we've already tested, and we'll test for continuity on VCAN2 on pins 29 there and 37 there. So we'll use our Truck Tech UK diagnostic test leads. We'll just use black and red for this, I think. So 29, there's that one, and 37, that's that one. We'll get a multimeter set up now and see what's going on. 
So we've got a set of test leads on the front here. I'll just pick up these two. That's at the bulkhead. So we'll set our multimeter now to continuity. Do we get a beep? Yes, right. So we'll pop this red in there and we'll get the end of these. So these are attached to the bulkhead. We're testing basically a circuit now from this plug to the bulkhead. How have we got continuity on this wire? Yes. So if we swap this over to black, have we got continuity on our next wire? Nothing. So there's nothing on that. So we didn't have any continuity on this black one here. That's in 29, which is can high. So what we'll do now is we'll back probe 29 on the other side of the plug, run it to the front and see if we've got communication with the issue, I think. So now we know where uh, VCAN2 can high is our issue. What I've done is I've just back probed can high on there, which is our blue wire. And I've run a red wire to that, which is on an extension lead. So we'll go to the bulkhead now and check we've got 120 ohms from the engine ECU. So now we're on our bulkhead plug here. We've got our two wires in there. We've got our multimeter. We'll set this to resistance because we want 120 ohms on this. We'll take our red wire and place that on the red because that was our can high. Uh, we want these two terminals here. Can low, which is yellow, is fine. We'll pop this in here and we'll pop this in that one. And we should have 120 ohms. Hopefully you can see that. 121.7 ohms. So we've restored our CAN network resistance. What we'll do now is we'll take this extension lead out of this plug, plug it in and see what faults we've got on JAL test. Let's get this in here. We'll bypass CAN high with this probe because this is our can high wire that we've put in temporarily and we'll go and turn the ignition on. Right, have we got any errors on the dash now? So we've got cab not secured, that's expected. We have got a warning, we've got brake lining wear and cab not secured. Our engine warning's gone off here, that's it. So what we'll do now is we'll just go into PCI. We'll connect directly to the ECU rather than running this quick check again. That'll take forever. And we'll refresh the faults in PCI ECU and see what's going on there. And as you can see, all our CAN communication issues that we had originally, they've all now gone to inactive. So I best make this temporary wire permanent because the customer certainly won't be paying for a wiring harness from the engine to the bulkhead. And yeah, that should be it. So we've made a permanent repair now. We'll start the truck, see how we get on. Looks good to me. So that was resistors. A nice quick video on variable resistance in that potentiometer on the fuel level gauge to start. And we finished on me checking the termination resistor in the engine ECU to identify a broken wire. Simple shortcuts that can save you time in your diagnostics. Hopefully you'll try and incorporate them in your own fault finding in the future. And that's it for another week. So, you know the drill. If you thought it was a good video, a thumbs up would be nice. If you want to see more from me, hit the all subscribe button and I'll catch you next time. Low fuel gauge. Low fuel gauge? Low fuel.